This is Adam, and he suffers from gout. Try Urol. It helps to prevent crystallization of uric acid crystals in gout therapy. Urol, effective urinary alkalinizer for gout. Hello, I'm Pia Ernadia, and this is Kini News. Mahadev's remarks in a TV interview has riled up the Indian community, resulting in several reports being made against him. Meanwhile, a former minister believes this could have been intentional as a tactic for the former prime minister to make a political comeback. Former Human Resources Minister M. Kula Segrin, who served under Dr. Mahathir Mohamed, has posited that his latest remarks on Indians in the country was intentional and meant to gain political support. The DAP vice chairperson claims this is Mahathir's tactic to make a last-ditch comeback after he and his Pajuang party suffered a total wipeout in the last general election. Kula Segrin said the loyalty and contribution of Indians to Malaysia should never be questioned. He added that the sacrifices made by hundreds of Indians alongside fellow Malaysians, including defending our sovereignty and combating the communist insurgency, serve as irrefutable evidence of their dedication and allegiance to Malaysia. Earlier, Kuala Selangor PKR chief Thiban Subramaniam lodged a report against Dr. Mahathir over his controversial statement questioning the loyalty of Malaysian Indians to the country. In the report lodged at Klang Selatan Police Headquarters, Thiban urged the police to investigate Mahathir's statement, which he claimed could incite racial sentiments among Malaysians. Meanwhile, PKR Central Leadership Council member R. Yunus Warren said Mahathir's statement was rude and prejudiced, angering all Malaysians. He added, as a patriotic Malaysian, he was personally aggrieved, sad and angry at the statement that came out of the mouth of the state's person. As Subramaniam, the Malaysian Indian People Party Deputy President, echoed the sentiment and demanded that Mahathir be investigated under the Sedition Act. The backlash, especially from the Indian community, is in response to Mahathir's statement in an interview with Indian TV channel Thanti TV, where he said, among others, that Malaysian Indians are not completely loyal to the country as they still identify with their country of origin. A Perikatan National Component Party also commented on the matter and called for the coalition to address the issue. Mahathir currently serves as advisor for PN in the states they governed. Gerakan will raise the issue on former Premier Dr Mahathir Mohamad's latest controversial statement at the coalition leadership meeting later this week. This is according to its president, Dominic Lau. Lau told Malaysia Kini that as a statesperson, it was completely inappropriate for Mahathir to issue statements that offended the feelings of other races. According to Lau, he had previously met Mahathir to express his party's regret over statements made during the by-election campaigns in Johor last year. He said at that time, Mahathir referred to political parties led by non-Malays as immigrant parties. In a statement, Lau also called on the government to advise Mahathir to stop cultivating sentiments that discriminate between races because they may damage the spirit of the Malaysian nation. He said the latest statement was very embarrassing and it should not have been issued by a figure who once advocated Vision 2020. He added that Malaysia is a unique country with a diversity of races and that diversity is the backbone of strength of this lucky country. Recently, in an interview with Indian TV channel Thanti TV, Mahathir had claimed that Malaysian Indians are not completely loyal to the country as they still identify with their country of origin. He said one should identify as Malay to have the right to call the country their own. When asked if one can remain loyal to the country while committed to their roots, he reportedly said that Malaysian Indians do not speak Malay as their home language, they speak Tamil. He then said that this problem is when immigrants call the country their own while professing their own cultures and customs. Mahathir is an advisor to PN in the four states that it governs, while Gerakan is one of the component parties of PN besides PAS and Bersatu. The Sarawak Premier has denied claims of being involved in a plot to topple the government. In a town hall session, Abang Johari stressed that politicians must put the rakyat first. Sarawak Premier Abang Johari Openg has once again dismissed speculations connecting him to the Dubai move and the Prime Minister's position. He was quoted in a Borneo Post report saying he was not dumb enough to be plunged into the peninsula's political mess. 
He also said it would be absurd for him, a leader of a political party with only 23 MPs, to be appointed to the top post. Tapi saya kata, nak letakkan orang Sarawak jadi Perdana Menteri dengan 23 MP, tak masuk akal lah. Tapi yang penting sekarang ini, semua ahli politik mesti memberikan kepentingan rakyat dan negara daripada Kementerian Menteri. Kami di Sarawak, insya Allah, kami tahu, kami berkendakkan negara Malaysia kuat. Kalau tidak, jiran kita sekarang ini ke depan. The Gabungan Party Sarawak leader added that he is aware of media reports alleging that he could be elected as Prime Minister but says he is satisfied with his current position. In fact, Abang Johari reiterated calls for Anwar Ibrahim to remain as Prime Minister until the end of his term. He explained that Malaysia is based on democracy and when elections are held and the results are in, we should accept the results. On January 1st, Abang Johari was cited by Malay Mail as saying that the political stability of the federal government should be prioritised, especially to attract foreign investment. Previously, it was reported that the opposition had allegedly offered the Prime Minister post to Parti Pesaka Bumiputra Bersatu, which is the main component of GPS, as part of the Dubai move. Sarawak was also allegedly promised greater autonomy, including up to 20% of oil revenue royalties for the state if GPS withdrew support for Anwar. A former law minister has spoken out against the idea of a bill to ensure an administration gets to govern for a full term. Zaid Ibrahim instead wants the current de facto law minister to pay more attention to reforms. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department for Law and Institutional Reform, Azalina Othman Said, has been urged not to waste her time on introducing a fixed-term Parliament Act. While noting that the FTPA has its advantages, former Law Minister Zaid Ibrahim believed it was not suited to the Madani administration. In a statement on X, Zaid said it will be a mess. Elaborating further, he said it worked well in the UK because a large single party like the Conservatives or Labour controls the British government and the fixed term is working because stability is assured not by the fixed term but by the strength of the ruling party. He added the FTPA will only bring about artificial stability in Malaysia as an attempt to strengthen a weak single party using a fixed term method. He reminded those who are in power not to be too anxious to rule for long periods by artificial means. Instead, he advised Azalina to focus on executing real fundamental reforms in the likes of repealing the Sedition Act 1948 and the MACC Act 2009. He also suggested to mandate the Attorney General to give reasons whenever he exercises his unfettered discretion. Yesterday, Azalina said the Legal Affairs Division will conduct in-depth studies to get public views on such legislation. She added that an engagement session with stakeholders will also be held soon, with the findings to be then reviewed by the Cabinet for policy-making considerations. The Pengarang MP said this in a statement welcoming a proposal to introduce a special bill that will ensure a government remains in power for its full five-year term. Meanwhile, other MPs are backing the FTPA and have spoken out to explain the benefits. Sungai Petani MP Muhammad Taufik Johari said a fixed-term Parliament Act or FTPA will not give the Prime Minister absolute and full power. Taufik explained that a widely talked about act will only limit that the administration must be governed by the winning coalition after a general election. He added that the Prime Minister can still be replaced but only by someone within the ruling parties. This comes after PKR's Pasir Gudang parliamentarian Hassan Abdul Karim objected to a proposal by Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zaid Hamidi to introduce a special bill that will ensure a government remains in power for its full five-year term. Taufik was among several government backbenchers who have thrown their support behind the idea of an FTPA. He said it is a good suggestion and supported it to ensure political stability in the country. Elaborating, he said when a government is elected, it is then given the space and opportunity to govern until the end of the term. He added that Malaysians won't need to guess when the next general election is or when the parliament will be dissolved. 
Meanwhile, Ipo Timo MP Howard Lee pointed out three benefits for Malaysia should the country embrace a fixed-term parliament. He said politically, it would end the cycle of unpredictable leadership changes, ensuring a steady hand at the helm of governance. He added that there are also benefits for the economy through stability as it will increase investor confidence. He said there are also social benefits as it allowed for a focus on inclusive and comprehensive socio-economic development instead of having to worry about political upheavals. In a follow-up to the investigations of an alleged arson attack on the house of the Burwas MP, Malaysia Kini has been told that the investigation is still ongoing. Here's what the police told Malaysia Kini. Perak Police Chief Mohammad Yusri Hassan Basri said the state police are still investigating the motive behind a fire that broke out at Burwas MP Ngeku Ham's house on January 10. Yusri told Malaysia Kini today that a probe on the case is still underway. This came after an individual was arrested on January 12 due to suspicion of committing arson at Nghe's house. Yusri said the suspect was arrested in Shah Alam Selangor at about 4 a.m. and will be remanded until January 16 for further investigation. When asked if the remand order against the suspect will be extended, Yusri said to wait for the results tomorrow. Previously, Yusri confirmed that a man who is in his 30s is not a member of any political party. He was also reported as saying that the force had seized two mobile phones from the suspect who does not have a criminal record. The case is being investigated under Section 435 of the Penal Code, which is liable to 14 years imprisonment and a fine. Following the incident, Nghe said he forgives the alleged arsonists behind the fire but also blamed Prikatan Nasional components, PAS and Bursatu, for fanning tensions that led to the incident. However, PAS and Bursatu leaders have hit out at the Perak DAP leader for his claim against them. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news update. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakidney.com. I'm Pia. Thanks for watching.